It looks like since the final experiment, the Globe Denier Level Earth Observer has regrouped and is back on the attack. This time he's having a pop at the sun and what he calls the impossible globe theory. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today though, a quick word from me about today's sponsors, Ground News. Before we get underway with today's episode, I'm happy to announce that I was reading today how NASA and ESA have confirmed that the asteroid 2024 YR4, you know, the one that we're all starting to worry about, poses no threat to Earth in 2032. And I was reading that story on Ground News, which was actually founded by former NASA engineer called Harleen Core, who worked on the James Webb Telescope. Now, Ground News combines stories and articles from thousands of outlets, local and national, in one place so readers can see the full picture of what's being reported around the world. As you can see here, Ground News shows you if there's any political leanings for each publication. And in this instance, with the asteroid story, we can see that it's mainly centre-driven with 157 total news sources. For every story, you get a quick visual breakdown of the news outlets covering it, their political bias, uh, how factual the source is, which entity owns the source, and which countries are covering the story. You can also click on any of the headlines to read the story from its original source. The best thing is you can develop a well-rounded world view. See every side to every story with access to international perspectives that are hard to find. So then you can make informed decisions where you can read, watch and share the best information available. Now Ground News is mission centric. It's not about eliminating bias, but providing better transparency. And they're funded by their community, not by ads or big investors. So go to ground.news slash Simon to stay fully informed on breaking news and compare coverage. Subscribe through my link for 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. Right, on with today's video then, and the self-proclaimed demonstrable realist level Earth observer. He's adamant that the globe's not possible and he is out to prove it. Take it away, good sir. The sun and the physically impossible globe Earth. Does that statement trigger you as a viewer? Honestly, no, because I know you and I know the content you produce. You have never ever provided any sufficient evidence to prove the Earth is not a globe. It's amusing to me rather than triggering. If it does ask yourself why, if it does trigger you, you continue to believe the globe Earth if you cannot refute that statement with some kind of physical demonstration. You need to address things within yourself and understand yourself better to help improve your discernment of things that really are quite simple to evaluate and understand really, but because of the psychological barriers in place put there by the education system and of course emotional attachments, people struggle. Understanding yourself has nothing to do with established facts. The earth is a globe, that's an established fact. No amount of self-valuation will change that to level earth observer. So think about that as a viewer here, a globe believer. Why you believe something that's physically impossible, the way you justify it is to attack straw man maps and models and concepts, but you have to ignore the physicality of the earth. It's worrying guys, it is. The psychology and the defense mechanisms that are on show here and the dishonesty, quite frankly. But that is your opinion. Because if I'm telling you the Earth is a globe, I'm being objectively honest. And let's be honest here, Elio, the people, the group of people that don't think the Earth is a globe, some of them are really awful. People that have left that community have said they've come back and said it's a cult-like behavior at times. Anyway, let's get to the subject of the video. The sun, we've, we've already discussed the globe's impossible physically. Everyone proves that themselves. Every globe believer proves that through non-citation of any kind of physicality. What an awfully worded statement that was. But I digress, please continue. Now I'm in the privileged position with my job as a tower crane operator. I get to do lots of observations of the sky, whether it be the sun, and in, in some cases, rainbows. Never knew you were a crane operator, level Earth observer. You've never mentioned that before. 
And we'll touch on that in a minute because that is a fascinating subject. But the sun is also an interesting one. When you do observations at the same time from elevated positions like tower cranes in quite close proximity. For example, one on the screen here at the bottom and two on the, at the screen at the bottom are tower cranes. Tower crane one is me, tower crane two is a mate of mine who's just under a mile away, 0.9 of a mile away from me, to my right and slightly set back. Now when we did observations of the sun at exactly the same time, tower crane two was seeing the sun in two in the position of two, whilst tower crane one myself was seeing the sun in position number one. Easy, you were pointed in different directions. There was a discrepancy of 45 degrees. Essentially, my mate was seeing the sun 45 degrees out from where I was seeing the sun. And yet he's only, well, he's just under a mile away from me as the crow flies. Can you confirm which way both of you were facing during this observation? Is there evidence to show us on this? Like a photo of you both holding a compass to show your bearing. You're always telling us to do the experiment yourself, a level Earth observer. If you had this, and then the images of the direction of the sun, then you'd be onto something. A diagram based off a story, unfortunately, means you're not. So explain to me, glow believers, or anyone who claims to know something relevant, physical, about the sun. How does that work on any model? Well, it clearly doesn't, does it? So I suggest that you are both facing different directions. We know the sun's apparent anyway, but 45 degrees out, based on two viewers who are just under a mile apart? I've known this for a long time. But how does that work? Do these observations yourself. I'll tell you what, Elio. I'll do this observation myself and I'll do it correctly. I will reference my bearing in terms of which way I'm facing and I'll document that properly, providing photographic evidence. Again, your story and a diagram are not enough. I believe it was Jake the asshole who suggested the sun is a very much a personal experience. And he could well be right, based on these observations I've been doing. And if you, you, you're at the beach and you're looking at the sun there, with the reflections on the ocean, say you're 100 metres apart from your girlfriend or whoever you're with, and you're looking at the sun and the reflections upon the water, the reflections on the water will be a personal experience only you will see. Your mate 100 metres away will have the same experience, but slightly different based on their position. They won't see the reflections you can see, and vice versa. You can walk towards each other, and you'll, basically the individual reflections will become one when your position becomes one, when you basically join each other. Yes, that's called perspective, Level Earth Observer. No one's arguing that. By the way, that's not a reason why you think you and your matey are seeing the sun at different angles. You are both looking in different directions. Again, suggesting that the sun is very much a personal, individual experience. How that works in the bigger scheme of things, I don't know. Again, it would require full exploration. I have heard some people discuss this, um, how the sun can be out with regards to observations, but not many speak of it. Certainly no globe believers are going to have want to entertain this subject because it destroys their theoretical world and belief system. What, a diagram and a story? Maybe you should conduct your experiments with the same thoroughness and diligence that you expect from others. You tried to tear the final experiment apart and they had photos, videos, time lapses, everything. You've got a basic diagram and an anecdote. Come on, Level Earth Observer, you can do better. And rainbows are also a fascinating thing to observe at the same time from two different um, observation points. Again, it's the same tower cranes, just under a mile apart, that were observing rainbows, that again would suggest they are very much an individual experience. 
Well, they are. No one is refuting that one. Rainbows are not physical objects like the sun is, but rather optical phenomena created by the interaction of light and water droplets. The specific rainbow that you see depends entirely on your unique position and line of sight, meaning no two people ever see the exact same one. Totally different thing to the sun itself. I can't show the photography of the rainbow observations or the sun observations at the moment until the jobs that myself and my mate are on have finished. I don't want to cause any hassle to him and the contractor he works for and obviously for myself as well. Unfortunately, people in the GLOBE community, when you highlight points that destroy their belief system, get so triggered that they actually want to do things that are rather unpleasant and try and cause problems for people's careers and just basically make stuff up. Well, I wouldn't do that, but I can't wait to see the images. I should be able to discern what direction you were both facing in those. Which is very disappointing, but again is a reflection of society, the education system, and where we're at now, as far as online representatives of the globe, and some of the failings of human behavior now, because of the direction we've gone, because of society, because of the education system and various other things, belief systems, etc. I would never have any ill will to you or anyone like you, Level Earth Observer. And I'm pretty sure other debunkers wouldn't either. In my experience, it's the globe deniers who are the worst when it comes to causing issues for the other side. I thought I'd share those observations with you, those points. I believe many of you will be aware of the sun and how it can be 45 degrees out when observed at the same time from two points of view that are fairly close to each other. In my instance, just under a mile apart. Fascinating. But wrong. Well, I think we'll leave this one here today as I say we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. I can't wait to see those photos, Elio, so we can get to the bottom of your claim. If I can prove that you were facing different directions, would we get an apology from you or a retraction? Let's wait and see. But for now, we are done. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of Level Earth Observer's video and his little diagram and story there on his experiment. Thanks so much for watching today. It is, as always, truly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Hitting the thumbs up button too would be fantastic. Uh, and sharing the video too, if the feeling takes you. Thank you. Just enough time for another word from me about today's sponsor, Ground News. Remember, go to ground.news slash Simon to stay fully informed on breaking news and compare coverage. Uh, click the link in the description to get 40% off unlimited access if you support the mission and find it as useful as I do. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.